So, what are the, what's the first question, basically? Let's let's nail who this one. Is this per- where is this? Who is this yeah. person, and when was this person active academically? And so, well, it's a French philosopher. Born to an Algerian Jewish family yep. Yep. in 1930. Yep. Died 9th of October 2004. Yep. Mm-hmm. Age 22, he moved to France. He yep. did Paris. Yep. Yeah, and he studied at the École Normale Supérieure and focusing on phenomen- phenomenology. phenomenology. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. The study of structures, experiences, and consciousness, whatever Whee! that means. <laughs> and he taught philosophy following the war from 1960. And his main influences were Nietzsche, Heidegger, Saussure, Levinas, and Freud. Okay. Yeah, okay, so what is this person known for and why might this be important? Well, he published several articles in the 60s, uh, yeah. sort of starting off for uh, Tel Kel, France's forum. But he's uh, actually known for the, theory. this semiotic analysis yeah. that we've mm. oh, been doing. I've just got him down as destru- yeah. dis- deconstructionism. Yeah. Yeah. Which he called deconstructionism. Oh, I see, okay, yeah. so it's <laughs> semiotic theory. <laughs> Which is basically looking at word, the written word yep. and its inferred meaning. Yeah, and yeah. questioning assumptions. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. Um, so what is uh, deconstruction well, all about then? Uh, well, what the he, simple version of deconstructionism? Oh, well, I don't know about that. I think it's interesting. He introduced words such as trace, presence, difference, deconstruction, logos, and play into the contemporary discourse. So he didn't say there's a right and wrong, or there's a left or right, or there's this, that and the other. He just said it's all a discussion. (coughs) Excuse me. So he he, um, um, challenged this idea of opposition. Is that right? It was opposition. There was something about... It was something opposition, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm not quite sure. What was the word? I can't remember what the word was. Mm-hmm. It, it says here binary yeah. binary opposition that's yes. it yay binary <laughs> opposition which they were all stuck on weren't they yeah. uh, which we, is what we said need what the deconstruction oh, is we're talking about it now so binary oppositions he said is what we need to understand meaning in text yeah but, but what he was against was what his predecessors were, say, were, were doing which was the preference so you would have two words left and right and people would automatically have a preference preference for right mm. and so what he would do in deconstructionism is he would flip it and say well actually I'm going to prefer the left and see what happens yeah. to the meaning of that word and to the other word that's the point that's the point Okay, so um, it doesn't matter. It is. He made a very f- famous quote: "There is no outside. There is no outside." Now that was mis. Oh, there is. There is no outside text, and this was misinterpreted and misread by lots and lots of people. But what he actually meant is, there is nothing outside context. There's nothing outside yeah. context. Yes, because for something to exist, it has to have something else against which. To to reference its existence, yeah. which was, what did he call it? Science. Science cannot exist. Yeah, this, this is in response to Sasha's yeah. stuff. And that science had, and he, brought, he uh, posed the question, how does science make meaning? And he said that every sign is divided into two parts, the signifier and the signified. But Jack Dorado, Dorado went on to dress... Uh, fuller implications about conception and I understood that that there that we brought with us all our baggage all our history our culture our sexuality gender and that meant that everything was deferred and so you came to a sign and that deferred to another sign that was defined to another sign yeah so everything was continuous yes it's infinite infinite yes yeah. He urged us to deconstruct these pairs, which he called violent hierarchies. Yes. 
Obviously, were you going to add something? Well, it's just I'm just talking about this um, deconstruction rather than talking around it and uh, what it sort of vaguely. Um, I just quite like this sentence I found here. Deconstruction seeks to identify logocentric paradigm digms such as dichotomies and show that the possibility of presence within any contextual language is in constant play and differs continually in relation to something else, leaving only a trace of the subject stroke object. I just think it's quite nice to put it into yeah. a, um, some sort of definition, if we can. So what does that, that mean? Quite nice. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. What does that mean? Um, well, this is when he was talking about the temporal uh, and the spatial differing. Yeah, it's like differing in, in relation to something else. Um, the so it's like what you were saying about yeah. the sort of the left and the right, that there's like two, yeah. um, you know, different things going on. So the difference... I wrote here, can only be found through appealing to additional words in which they have a stark contrast to, a difference to, to find the what? meaning of a particular word. You have to look to its uh, yeah, opposite to yeah. identify its meaning. Yeah. No duality, that's no what identity. duality is. Yeah, yeah, I've got or, a origin, no absolute identity. It's Nothing that it's itself. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Do you want to add? Do you want to add? No, pretty much covered. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, We've all got to put into this, okay? <laughs> oh, no, mine's the first question. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. I didn't go that far. So, what, what is, is that all about then? So, number four. Oh, God. Um, can you, can you well, say post-structuralism? Well, um, post post-structuralism. Oh, yeah, so post post-structuralism. In relation yeah. to Dorado, whatever his name is. Dorado. Dorida. Dorida. Um... The reason that he, in relation to this person, what is structuralism? Well, post structuralism, post -structuralism thank you, is a movement that can be tied to a fact mounting criticism of structuralism, whatever that means. There we go, I've got it. The method of binary opposition and maintain that meanings and in intellectual categories. Oh, right. Okay. Well, I got it as a I'll movement, and, structuralism as a movement to understand human culture by means of structure. Yes. And although he praised their accomplishments, he said um, he had reservations about its limitations, hence he was labelled a post-structuralist. That sounds good. That sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what oh, his reservations were. Because their structure was final, and it's not final. He looked at it as not being final, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, it's shifting yeah. and unstable. It's is basically, all... Yeah. And um, the perceiver's mental state is constantly in a state of flux. Yeah. 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 Yes. Well, I, I've got, I keep coming back to spatial and temporal, because to me those two are the, the really clarify it for me. Where spatial differing was like writing uh, a memo for somebody and leaving it, leaving it for them to read. So the person who's written the memo and the person who's reading the memo yeah. are both perceiving yeah. those words completely differently. differently. And in fact, yeah. even if you question the person who wrote it, it's how it's understood. you can't pin it down because it's still he, that person is also in a constant state of change. Yeah. So that's the spatial. Differing, and then you've got the temporal deferring. So that's what brings up the final aspect of it is because the person who wrote the note is a different person an hour later, therefore his interpretation. So you can never infer what the meaning is because it's constantly in a state of flux, yeah. even to the person who wrote it. So you can't even question him about the meaning of what he's written. So you can understand. Go back to when he wrote it and then question him. Yeah, but it's but even then... It's one person. It's one person. Yeah. So you can understand so why um, Dorita decided to go for the, the opposition to find a state of sort of um, a balance in the duality yeah. of the two. Yeah. yeah. As opposed to what they were doing before, which was preferring one over the other. Yeah. Okay. He questions the whole thing about the written word, doesn't he? And says the importance of speech... What is the importance of speech? Well, he said it's a pure form and that you get a, 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 in a hierarchic communication speech is all important because it's um, 
off the cuff, it's not edited, there's not spaces in it, and you get it from the originator. But then that's where the whole thing comes into question, isn't it? Because then you have a word like difference in yeah. French, and that's difference can be spelt two different ways and have two completely different meanings, and that's where it becomes separated from the original. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Right.